Okay, hi Nikhil. Hi. Um, can you uh, tell me a little bit about yourself so the viewers of this uh, video can actually get sure. to know you a little bit? Sure. So, hi everyone, I'm Nikhil. I'm from Pune, Maharashtra. I did my engineering, I graduated as an electrical engineer from Pune. And um, after that, I worked for almost three years with Tata Consulting Services, TCS. Okay. And uh, tell me something. Uh, how did you join Teach for India? Right. Um, so, during my time at TCS, I uh, took a lot of part in um, confidence building programs as well as CSR programs. I organized some things. Uh, during that time, I had a lot of experiences. I met a lot of people. I saw a lot of documentaries regarding the situation the world is in right now, how things are going. And I really felt like I wanted to be a part of the solution instead of being a part of the problem. And okay. I, I felt a, I felt a need to reach out and work work with the communities and do something like I don't know do something different. So I decided to discontinue my okay. So I decided to discontinue my uh, uh, what my job. And um, I came back home and um, basically I had saved enough money in the past few years and um, I had made a commitment that I'll spend about a year or so without trying to apply for another job so that I can explore different opportunities, what I, what I want to do. Maybe it was higher studies or maybe it was working in another sector or something or maybe just exploring passions of my own. So how did you hear about Teach for India? A friend was applying for Teach for India, she told me about it. I checked out the website, I checked out what they were doing. I really liked the, I really liked the idea at the time of um, using education as a tool to, uh, to for upliftment of the masses. Okay. And um, so I just, um, I was in Pune, so I con Teach for India was had many schools in Pune. I started volunteering at one of the, at uh, one school and I really liked the experience of volunteering. So as a volunteer, I there was a lot of interaction that I could do with the kids. I could play with them a lot, as well as um, there was work that I could do outside the classroom, helping in correcting test papers. To there was a library project, so creating a library for the school that all the students can use. And so it it was really good because um, these kids were coming from very humble backgrounds, and here we were giving them resources by which they could really aspire for something greater. So I like the whole concept and the idea of it and um, I applied for Teach for India and I got through the application pro application round. Okay. And so this was, uh, so now you've been, you worked for Teach for India for how long mm. and uh, what happened uh, okay. and why did you leave Teach for India? Right. Um, so it's a two year fellowship program. Um, what happens is that uh, they take highly qualified, they say it's highly qualified people and uh, they place us in schools uh, which are either government run or privately owned but with very low budget so so that we can serve kids from the minority and the poor communities and um, so it's supposed to be a two year fellowship but i could not continue for a second year i completed one year with teach for india and i had to leave um, what what happened what prompted you to there were there was a whole plethora of factors. There was but two main things that prompted me to leave were okay. um, one a long term observation of the way the education system ran and the way Teach for India was like what role Teach for India had to play in that um, and uh, my observations of that which I'll ex which I'll elaborate further and an, and another which served as a triggering effect was a scandal that erupted in Teach for India regarding the um, regarding an unfair treatment of another colleague uh, against which I took a stand. So, if you let's go with the first one, hmm. give us some idea about what uh, was that you noticed that was not appropriate in the teaching methodology. Right. So, um, when we first started off, it was um, like as I guess is it must be the trend in most institutions that um, it's it's all very hunky dory, very great like. Um, immense beautiful ideas of how we can what we can do but how to do it was where 
I found a little problems was it's it's because Teach for India has basically copied a model from Teach for America, which has been going on for about twenty years in the U.S. And um, that model is primarily focused on numbers, so improving the numbers, making sure the kids are excelling in this and this objectives. They take subjects, they break them down into smaller, smaller, smaller objectives. They um, uh, so we divide the entire year into units and weeks and tests and subjects and periods. We continuously test the kids, and uh, there's a lot of money thrown into this. We have um, every month we get reimbursed for um, xeroxing, xeroxes of worksheets that we give the kids. So I was literally I must have been printing anywhere between 34 to um, multiple of 34 A4 size papers every day. So, and to give to the kids and um, the initial uh, the initial vision of teach for india was that to bring excellent education to every child in india so just a, by a very rough estimation i felt that the amount of papers that i was printing to teach 34 kids if we were to expand that to every child in india i don't think there's enough number of trees in the world to produce that much paper so um, the idea was good of bringing excellent education but the way to go about it was to throw money and resources at the problem and i just found that unsustainable i didn't think that that could last very long there were that this was tied in with another problem that um, um, the model that we got from teach for america was following a very corporate minded that structured model top down approach so it celebrated as a very efficient way of doing things but once you really get inside the trenches um when i spent the entire year in that model i found out that it's um, there are some fundamental contradictions over here give us an example um so for instance um, when we when we initially were joining teach for india one of the declared intentions was to create um the next independent thinkers of india so uh, the kids that we would be impacting we would have to show them how to be independent thinkers but the model that we were following the one that's focused on numbers mostly on numbers only what it what it actually did was that it uh, there's a whole you, you really ought to read some literature on this i really can't explore it in that much in depth as john taylor gatto or um, other authors have done but um, like in a nutshell what happens is that if you follow a top down model in which you are focused only on numbers you end up not creating criti- critical thinkers you, you do not create independent minded people what you create is a bunch of people who are willing to jump through hoops in order to achieve a certain certification in order to make a certain grade in order to please the teacher so give us example what they what did you guys do to get the students to please you guys right so um one good part about this was of course i mean see being the type of institution it was we had a clear policy of non uh, non violence in the classroom meaning no hitting the students or anything okay um but here's a problem in a very under resourced school and with a background that that encircles these schools it's very difficult to get the classroom under your control and which is why this this institutionalized hitting of kids has come up in the first place because it's so difficult to control a classroom in which you're locking kids inside and you're making them sit in one place so as an alternative to the violence what we had was psychological control example so um we would incentivize the kids we ah. would have consequent negative consequences and positive consequences the kids who would sit quiet in the classroom with fingers on their lips and follow all the orders follow all the rules raise their hands for every answer would get rewarded so uh, a few rewards that some of the fellows did was okay the kids who are the most behaved get to go to pizza hut with didi or bhaiya didi or bhaiya were the teachers we we were named as didi or bhaiya so that was the kind of incentives you giving to these kids who are living in slum areas okay who are living in whose parents have come from farming communities some of these kids are the first kids to ever enter school in their entire family and to them you we are showing incentives like uh, getting fancy books or in the classroom getting chocolates or um, going to a mall going to mcdonalds to pizza hut eating over there did you bring this up with the management um uh, we a lot of us brought this up and um, a lot of the times it was accepted that this wasn't a good thing 
um but it was all, at the same time it was also accepted that given the situation at hand given that uh, there was nothing else we could do in the beginning it was okay to use material incentives the directive that was given to us was to try to orient the class towards a more value based thing but mm. here's the problem it when you have the basic structure that depends on numbers pushing for numbers and making sure these these objectives are met when you have that top down model it sort of becomes like window dressing when afterwards you say that oh you want to do value based trading you want to do value based approach because you can't really train values into how, things how how would you uh, how would you get values uh, inculcated what would be your method of doing? you're saying abolish the numbers hmm um what i wanted and i what i actually proposed to the management during my first few months was that um i did not want the system of depending only on numbers i felt that many of the kids they needed their own space a lot of so a few kids were very good in math very bad in english a few kids were very, it was all all across the place no kid um i just felt i just found out the hard way that even in a whole class of 8 8 year olds or 9 year olds no one kid is the same they all have the different ways of learning so how do you how do i get them to independent thinking so i wanted a approach in which they would be free to talk with them with each other in which they would be free to do things on their own and with that and for that to happen it's important to remove this this uh, system in which we have these rules the, they have to sit in one place they're not supposed to talk to anybody they're supposed to follow orders they're supposed to um meet these these objectives the objectives were too difficult for these kids the backgrounds that they have the whole problem with the primary education sector in india is that um you have created standards which are way too high so do you have any data to show or experience to show that actually uh, uh, you know a methodology where you do not measure you do not keep track and you let the child be hmm. where it is more effective and you have better results can you hmm. share some information about that so what i learned in the network of fellows that we had and through through that was um, that there were several other alternative methods there are several alternative schools that have been start, that have started up um mostly in the west in india also there is a whole philosophy in schooling following rabindran tagore's ideas krishna murthy's ideas gandhi's ideas of nayi taleem there is a rishi valley school somewhere in south india there are there's mirabilia there's riverside to an extent in ahmedabad there are several alternative education schools um and there are some places where there's democratic schooling means the kids get a vote on everything and uh, in the us um what i came across the documentation that i came across was mostly from from the west because um it's um homeschooling unschooling as well as free schooling is a very well matured movement over there i mean there's a lot of work being done over there in india it's quite in its um nascent stages it's it's just forming but there's already networks being formed in india of people who have decided not to put their kids in school so um what i can relate to is that i've spent at least a month with um with a bunch of kids who have not been to school never went to school their parents did not put them in school and um, if they were in teach for india if they were in my classroom i might have had to categorize them as um, failures as dumb kids as kids who don't know this and who need special help because they wouldn't have been able to fill my criteria of reading this many words per minute or solving this many math questions Thanks. but these kids that i've spent time with who are unschooled are incredibly smart they have amazing set of values with them they have an independent mindset they can get things done they can survive on their own they can get around they are extremely good at talking with people and they have passions of their own which they've gained expertise in their artists um the elder brother is uh, who's just from 12 or 13 years old right now he is um, very good at making movies and making animations on flash in computers so um things which people learn only after college this kid has learned in his childhood and they have done that by literally by jugaad methods by just looking at how others were doing it and learning from that improvising on their own trying failing trial and error method so what i learned from them as well as what i learned from some other people who have um, 
there's um i'm sorry to digress there's a free school sort of yeah there's a free there's a school dealing with alternative education started outside pune about 30 to 40 kilometers from pune it's called sadhana school so it's um it's just about 3 years into its formation and it teaches kids who live in that geographical area so it's mostly kids from the village over there and um, they have a free model so the kids come and there's plenty of interaction going on between the teachers and the children and um, there's no need felt of giving them toys or giving them this material to learn that material to learn the limited teaching that does happen is at the kids free will so if if a student does not want to learn something right now at that point of time he is free to get up and walk off they are free to go around and do what they want to there is no compulsion in these schools of doing whatever you are told so your experience is that there is another way there is, there a, is probably a better way, way yeah. and you are seeing some results as yeah. a result of Yeah. In, in India the schools and um, like I don't have the data on the schools that are there I haven't been able to visit them yet I've been able to read a lot of literature from the US um some of the schools particularly the Sudbury Valley school they have had um an unbe- sort of an unbeaten track record of more than 30 years of operation and they haven't had any kid with learning disabilities why it's not like they they screened out the uh, those abnormal kids no they took a normal kids and uh, their fees are not high their fees are same as public schools over there in the us but the thing is they didn't bother to teach the kids the kids learned on their own so um kids have different stages of starting to read if you if you just take reading like literature literacy then there might be some kids who might start at 4 there might be some kids who will start at 8 or 7 there might be some kids who start reading at 14 but that doesn't make the kid who starts reading at 14 as dumb because by the time they reach adulthood everybody is on the same level yes. and that's true for every subject out there so this obsession with making sure that the kids match are able to multiply these two numbers together and divide these two numbers and when they are 8 years old that obsession is actually hurting the children and i saw that happening i saw amazing kids like my own classroom kids they are amazing in whatever they did each and every one of them was special but the one who was had the most independent mindset happened to be because of the system the most rowdiest kid the kid who created who was the trouble maker of the class and so he got punished punished and punished and i myself was a punisher so in this classroom rather than really imparting education to the kids what happened was that i became a jailer i literally felt on a lot of days that i was a prison warden and these kids are jail inmates and because lit- i'm holding them against their will inside a confined space they're not allowed to move around they're not allowed to talk to each other what else would you call it so then t- tell me more about the second reason that uh, this was of course one of the main yeah. reasons but something else you mentioned which was not uh, proper uh, something about uh, something happened to your colleague hmm. and that led you to feel like you know it's time i leave uh, what happened exactly can you share with us what happened all right um i'll um, i'll not mention the names because it can be a sensitive topic it involves it involves some people who might get harm from that but i'll I'll try to make sure I don't mention anything but still I'll relate the events and um my request is to treat this as something that can happen to anybody because literally the situation was like that it could have happened to anybody um, um related with the earlier reason as I said I knew these were the problems but um, there was still a hope that you know some so some way I could be in the system and try to influence it to change uh maybe i could make things work in some way or maybe i could finish two years doing this trying to make things work and then move on to something but what prompted me to walk out after the first year itself was um an incident from which it it became quite clear that the same top down system that i was trying to enforce in my classroom was being enforced upon me and upon all my other fellows so what happened was that around um, this uh, yeah around christmas just a few days before christmas 2011 um a colleague who was in her second year uh, was fired and um, this sort of thing didn't really happen around because uh, in teach for india it's like 
you're a teacher in a school so you have to really finish the whole year and so firing is not something that happens every day i mean that whole year nobody had gotten fired and it's not an employee type thing we're in a movement so you know the the whole assumption is that everybody's here to do something good so then i said uh, we everybody heard about somebody getting fired so then we started talking about it asking what was happening there was very little information available what what we were told apparently through which came through the managers was that this person had done something very wrong or something um but what i found out even from uh, one colleague of mine who happened to be a good friend of this um this yeah. other colleagues was that uh, that person didn't even know that she was going to get fired and that sort of looked a little bit fishy to me i've seen similar situations happening in some corporates before that like some past experiences and um, i smelled a basically i smelled something fishy uh, i contacted the person who got fired i mean come on they're all human beings we can always call them and um, i met her and uh, she saw she showed me a copy of her termination letter and when i read it i was like okay there were there's a host of little like there's like maybe 10 or 15 reasons given okay i i myself was guilty of doing practically each and every one of those example late submissions forgot to submit something did not come to school on time on some day or the other did not inform the principal and for each and every one of these um the uh, the fired the fired fellow had an explanation that she was this day stuck in traffic this day fell ill that day the principal did not pick up the phone and this was interpreted in the charges list as if oh you did not inform the H- hm that you were not coming on that day. like do what are we i was when i read that i was like what the hell i should get fired right now for this and not just me all fellows are like that i mean come on this is a very difficult job it gets extremely stressful we are bound to have to skip a few deadlines every week we have to submit something we are bound to be a few hours late at some point of time we are bound to have some or the other problems so then what do you do and uh, we were told from the very beginning when since we joined east india that yes these problems will come and the management is there to help us in this to support us that this is the support that they are getting so i talked with her about this and she was completely distraught at the time she had no idea what the hell had happened because even when she read the charges even she was like what the hell is this so and when she asked them they said that there's no more room for discussion okay so what did you do after that so i took a few copies of that because i wanted to show my friends the copies of the termination letter because basically it was like it must have been the most embarrassing document created in dfi's short 3 year history uh, any fellow like maybe i don't know about australia as any fellow who has been at eastern india fellow if he reads this termination letter he'll instantly know that there's something wrong over here these charges are simply not something on which you can fire a fellow mm. and so i took a few copies and um, i was showing it off to a few friends um, our whole group of teachers from india was going to ahmedabad in a train and i showed it to a few colleagues and we were talking about it and we decided that we want to go as a group to the management and approach them and ask them what is this ask them for some answers because this is somebody's career on the line i mean a lot of people joined teachers from india because it's a very good boost to the careers two years experience somebody who's this and this colleague was in a second year so she was just four or so months short of finishing the fellowship is like somebody is literally putting in two years to help the country basically that's the idea with which people joined east india at the end of two years if you're just fired for apparently no reasons is it you literally wasted two years of somebody's life and that person had a very well off job before that the, she quit the job and came over here and a lot of things like that so but what happened here was that word got to the management to the to the pune management managers that i am talking to people about this they summoned me and they tried to pressurize me to not talk about this to anybody and um, so i had a conversation with them and basically i had been signed up to be some some person to just quit quietly follow orders i mean i had joined a movement this is we're doing something good over here we are, we are not supposed to be in a fascist structure we're not supposed to be in a top down corporate model over here 
so that was quite surprising but i asked them to explain the thing so yeah i talked to the managers they shared their side of the whole thing they told me many lots of big reasons that something this person has been doing saying this wrong thing that wrong thing lots of reasons why they have, why they felt it was proper to fire her but then i questioned them about the way in which they did it and they had nothing to say about that i questioned them about how could how is it that she did not even know that she was going to get fired how is it that you invited her to a meeting to casually talk about something and suddenly you fire her i mean that is just surprise and you can you can't do that with people it, it screws their complete heart mind everything so what do they say and they had nothing to say for that like the managers were just quiet on that um after that what i did was they had they were saying something which was sounding very convincing so i told them this that okay let's do like this your the termination letter that you written and given to her doesn't include any of these things so please give me in written what you are telling about this person i mean let's have a written record and let's at least inform the person that you are fired that these are the reasons why you fired her here the manager sort of i can't really remember what reaction they gave because it was nothing they could not tell yes to me they could not tell no to me and they never got back to me on that so we decided to continue a conversation back in pune we were outside pune at the time we would get back to the conversation after getting back to pune i wrote them in an email all the reasons why i felt this is something is wrong here what do i need to investigate they said they'll get back to it and all but about a month passed and practically nothing had happened what they did do was because i was asking these questions it got around the place a bit so they approached this fellow once again they told her that they'll have a trial a closed door hearing in which the managers themselves are at the on the judging panel so what is this i mean they are the ones who are supposed to prove the charges and they're presuming this person guilty until proven innocent and that just seemed it seemed like a ploy to tell everybody later that oh yeah we held a hearing and we fired the person instead of telling we fired the person then we held a hearing so she didn't fall for it and um, and then what happened is that she um, summed up all the charges against her and she wrote an email and sent it to the entire organization and um, i was happy that that happened because so this sort of showed that this person was standing up for herself and um, she also gave an archive of all the email records that she had with the management which clearly showed like when you actually read through all of that it, it clearly showed that this was a complete surprise attack there was no reason for firing this person i mean there was no indication that this would happen and suddenly after firing her all her colleagues all her immediate colleagues get this email from the manager saying that we've been trying about this for months and we've been trying to get her performance to improve and all i mean if you're trying to get somebody's performance to improve you should at least inform them that you're trying to get their performance to improve uh, it didn't so, make any sense so so then what did you decide to do after that so um i was just waiting i mean it was obvious that the manager would have to reinstate this person there was no real reason why they fired her but what happened instead was that nothing happened i mean they just decided to not do anything about it almost a month passed and um, during that time i got summoned by the main leadership to talk to talk to me about this matter they felt i, I was talking about it to people the management had complained about me basically and um, so i was put on a 10 day moratorium i was not allowed to talk to anybody about it and i then i questioned them over email that why why are you trying to block my freedom of expression why don't you actually investigate the matter so then i got summoned to a meeting and over there luckily the the one of the chair persons of teach for india um she held a private meeting with me rather than having it with the managers she held it with me and this was a very old lady and um, i explained her the whole situation she said she told some things and i showed her how it was misconstrued like you know the case where uh, the person is unable to call the call the head mistress and you writing it as did not inform the hm like mm. and things like that so i told her that there's a way to undo it all and she said okay but she also told me that the managers have been complaining about me emailing the emailing everybody and sending threatening stuff and all and i was like wait a second i am emailing i haven't emailed anybody about this like that fellow who got fired had emailed the entire organization but she was only giving the facts she hadn't written anything 
and I had not told anybody, I had not mass mailed, I had only mailed the management and my immediate managers about this. So what is this? She said, yeah, she saw an email. Like, where? Show it to me. Yeah, this, there's a printout. She showed me a printout. It had one email of mine I sent to the managers, another email of mine that I sent to the whole organization on something else. It was like another initiative I was taking, non-related. Two emails copy pasted to each other. And it was a very shoddy job. I started laughing at that. I had brought, I knew that this, I mean, our chair, the chairperson is a very old lady. She must not be familiar with computers. I had brought printouts of all my communications with the management. And I showed her, ma'am, this is one email. This is the other email. And she immediately got rid of this paper. And she said, ye choti moti baat hai. Isme padna. But after that, I managed to catch her attention. And she said, she'll, they'll work in, they'll look into it. But even after this meeting, when it was obvious that the management was lying and trying to get me into trouble on, on top of they that, decided. they did not do anything. So what they did was they gave the fellow an updated offer that um, you quietly walk away, you give your own personal reason for resignation and we will accept that and we will, um, we will uh, erase all the charges against you. And that was like, when I heard, when we found out about that, that was like, just lost hope everybody all our the common friend circle everybody just lost hope like what the hell these guys are literally like corporates so what would be your i mean if i were to summarize huh. uh, for people who are looking at this video to see if if teach for india is a place to work what would you like to tell them in one sentence or, or summarize it i'm sorry i dragged it i think we should cut it in the middle now but i need to finish this story a bit um oh, there's still more yeah something very big happened after that so after that pause again uh, now say all right so after that um, after seeing that the the leadership are uh, even after knowing that they have screwed up they were not going to reinstate the fellow and all of that um, what I had to do, what I felt compelled to do was that I had to collect all the information in a better format so I created a, a file which is a website inside a single file itself it's called tiddly wiki you can look it up on the net um, so I could store a, I stored all the information that this fellow had sent to everybody all, all out already I dug up the legal document that governs the functioning of Teach for India regarding its fellows and um, took out the clauses for termination and everything and um, created tables and all to show how each and every clause was violated by the management because they did not follow these, these procedures extensive amount of procedures none of the procedures were followed so I brought that all into a very easy to read fashion and I sent it to the entire organization and before that I, I had already informed the, them that now I can't afford to keep quiet anymore um, this has gone like beyond tolerance levels and it was just not right what they were doing with this person and so I just felt like I since I knew the, about this matter all this I had to put it out to everybody at least communicate the matter so it went out to everyone created a storm and then uh, we had a city conference coming one day before that I sent out another mail to everybody with more evidence like I sent out a bunch of emails and um, one of the emails there was an open letter to the management singling out the three managers in Pune who were responsible for this entire mess mm. telling them openly that the buck stops at you you are the ones who have created this problem not teach for India not our chairpersons not the fellows but all of our reputations are going to get destroyed if this goes on if you guys operate like this because this is going to get out there if you don't solve this problem so please solve this problem and stand up and tell and prove to everyone that you have followed the procedures if indeed you have because till then they have given and written something else verbally they've been telling people and spreading false rumors everywhere and there's nothing in written of what they are telling everybody so it's complete mismatch so that got everybody in sense the next city conference the entire group came in more than a hundred people in united voice told them that fire us right now because we have violated all those things that you have given in that fellow's termination letter or explain to us why you did this to all of this the management had only one thing to say because of legal complications we can't answer your question uh, one person asked a question as simple as in the last three months 
has the manager of this fat fellow set foot inside her classroom to monitor her performance yes or no and they could not answer this question because they had not set foot in a classroom so it was a whole like basically it, it was an electric atmosphere everything pura bhanda phut gaya basically but still they said oh the decision rests with the upper leadership which was not present in the room at that time and so they were still dragging things on so then i sent i created an opinion poll and sent it to the entire um, entire organization asking for fellows to respond anonymously with their opinions on whether this uh, whether the firing was correct or not whether you do you think the rules should be followed or not blah 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 and um, i sent it out in the afternoon at night about 11 o'clock the leadership sent a mail to the entire organization telling that the fellow has been reinstated okay yeah so i got i mean we got the fellow reinstated um all her salary that was blocked was refunded to her and so the whole termination was completely withdrawn and cancelled wow but in the process uh, a lot of people had committed to do a mass resignation i see if this does not happen and that's how like the leadership was forced to do the right thing rather than being inspired to do the right thing right? but then even after that you still resigned um why because the managers were not fired the managers who did this did were not fired i mean they should have at least resigned looking like they had literally lied to everybody and they did not do that on top of that after this person gets reinstated the whole mood of everybody is like okay let's have peace let's have quiet now let's do our own jobs let's forget about this ever happening but i was summoned to by the management and the guy who would lie to everybody get away get away the guy who had lied to everybody is now bringing up some small small things against me and he puts me on an official warning one step away from termination don't misbehave like this again So and i asked him directly like don't you even as a human being want to apologize to at least this person for doing this thing to her and he's and he's telling whatever complaints you have you can give it in written form and before that i had told them whatever complaints you have you can give it to me in written form which they had refused to do they had given me only verbal so then i spent two weeks thinking do i want to continue another year what do i do i mean these guys are not going to go away I had figured out by then that the way we were controlling our kids in a top-down manner was the same way this entire organization was controlling us. So basically, I was the bad kid, the independent thinker who had stepped out of line, and now they had to reprimand me. And uh, I just felt like I don't want to give these people any opportunity to screw around with me. I don't want to live under someone like this. And um, I, this is not what I had signed up for. so i uh, i created a resignation website in which i gave a message to the manager to the leadership to all the fellows and i even listed the entire minutes of the meeting of my meeting with the manager and i exposed all the like whatever things he had brought up against me i exposed the context so it's like you have a huge paragraph from that he took out a sentence and he said this was very offensive but then if you click on that you see the entire paragraph and you figure out that there's nothing wrong in that so again like one resignation website and i said goodbye to the to all the fellows and i resigned from teach for india but i uh, there was one more month left of school so i continued with my school i made sure all the kids got the results i made the transition document i handed over the baton to the next fellows and i got out so if you were to summarize anybody else who's considering hmm. joining teach for india you you tell them that don't join i would join. say that there are um, much more positive opportunities in the education sector there is an amazing movement of unschooling of free schooling of home schooling alternative education that you ought to check out look for it google it up you'll find it go into the history of education the history of modern compulsory schooling read the texts read the, find out there's a lot of literature on that on why the the system came find out how kids are trained there's a hidden curriculum in schooling we are training the children to be obedient factory workers basically it's all about factory education that's why the education system started in that way we haven't changed it in more than 100 years whatever changes have come as is window dressing the basic thing of segregating the children by ages separating them from their friends and family 
isolating them in classrooms keeping them locked up making sure they stay quiet and do not talk to each other all of this is engineered to create a population that does not have a free will of its own that is con- that is a consumerist population that keeps on depending on other people that is that keeps on going down to authority so if you want to be part of this system and propagate this then maybe it's a good option but otherwise in the education sector there are much better ways to spend this much money i mean literally the salary that i was being given for my classroom 34 kids i mean i was being paid about 15000 rupees a month i was i just did the calculation that 15000 rupees a month i was being paid in teach for india for a classroom of 34 kids if instead they had just taken 15000 into 12 the entire years money and directly given it to those kids or directly invested in that classroom they could have educated those kids much better they could have provided better training to the to the original teachers the government teachers that are there they could have provided resources like computers and projectors for the classroom they could have done a lot of other things rather than in wasting all that money in me so i literally wasted money that was donated to help these 34 children and they did not get any help out of it so it's more about tracking where the money is coming from as well as where is it going is it being effective i mean just do a cost benefit analysis there's too much money being wasted in this model being thrown at the problem and you're not actually solving the problem so yeah that's just my take i mean uh, of course there will i can be wrong there can be others that can tell me but this is my observation this is my personal observation and i don't really mean to i mean i felt a lot of angst towards the management for doing that at that time with, with the managers involved but right now i'm feeling that if in their place if any other human being was there they would have done the same thing i mean this was a system that was designed the entire structure was designed in a top down control manner in a way that they would have had to fire somebody to make an example out of them to make everybody else fall in line to make everybody else submit the things in within the deadlines and all so i just found it extremely the system itself was insensitive so you can't really blame any people in that it's that kind of thinking that comes in corporates that comes in top down organizations every year so um if you want to get out of that there's lots of opportunities now which i'm exploring in the alternative education space as well as in the movement space in anything and there's much better ways to live your life um, there's much better ways to help kids rather than these things there's amazing things you can do just contact me anytime i will have a conversation thanks